welcome to another video for the Midian Guard. Today we're going to take a look at Vampire, um, The Eternal Struggle. Card game that I um, played years ago, then uh, just life happened and looking to actually come back into it. Now that we're supplying it into in the store, really wanted to get back into it. Now this is the box I used to turn up with, with all my secret decks. We used to play every Thursday, about five to six of us. And you know what, I thought my decks were pretty right back then when I got to tournament stage. Mm, not really right up to it. I gave a competitive edge, may have taken one or two people out, but you know what, wasn't good enough to actually stay in the games. But on those Thursday nights, they were really fun. And with five to six people, it was hard to take out a night. May have taken one or two nights out. Now, I used to put my decks in these things. All the cards used to be blue, it seems. The um, vampires were not sleeved, which is pretty weird. Um, but these boxes, you just put in and put one box at the beginning, and that one is the symbol for the salubri. So I would hide my um, what I was playing until taking it out, and then people knew exactly what that was. So salubri, fair bit of attack, and my playstyle is quite a bit aggro. So let's see what's in the deck. I don't think it's going to be as competitive right now, but you never know. Let's take a look at what we got. All right, so first off, we've got the vampires. Now with the Salubri deck, the reason I play Salubri is just uh, for Salot. Okay, Salot the Wanderer. Um, I had two of them in this deck. You know, I'm not sure what's happening with this deck. I should have about 12 vampires. I've only got four, five, six, seven in here. So some have been probably taken out for other decks. I had Mr. Noir. Another Salubri and Urail um, in there as well. Um, had a Gangrel in there, um, two copies of him, and a Daughters of Cacophony. Now, I probably had some other Daughters in there, I'm not too sure. Now, I know I've got, um, oh, there it is, the um, Arcane symbol, because I saw some cards in this deck. So, all I've done is I haven't really looked through the deck other than to put everything in a particular order. So, let's take a look at the actions. Now, if you've played this in the past, you might have a good idea. Now, one of the um, Salubri cards, Spirit Marionette. You get to bleed at plus one, um, tap a ready minion controlled by your prey, or take control of a ready untapped minion, and that's what I used. Um, yeah. It was always good to take someone else's minion and do with it what I liked. This one I would try and take as much blood off vampires as possible and then raise them up to the full capacity. So really trying to take advantage of some of um, the main salubri abilities, which um, this guy had um, demon powers, but um, you've got three of his main powers, which he had all at uh, a super level. So really looking forward to get our Salot out, and he was an 11 cap. So Freak Drive allowed me to, our uh, Freak Drive allows you to do an action, and then after that action, um, do another one. <laughs> if it's successful, or even if you get into combat at a higher level. Repulsion, um, now we these were actions, these are now action modifiers, so we're just getting into some of them. Repulsion, which was another uh, ability from the Salubri and then Neutral Guard as well. Only one off though. Um, then we went into Reactions. Now, being um, a deck that makes use of the eye at Superior, we have a fair few reactions. So, uh, one of the Salubri reactions was Peacemaker. So I had that in there. I cannot remember for the life of me what this does. Uh, cancel combat. The action continues as if unblocked. Well, that was using the star, but they don't. He doesn't have the star. So as above, and untap the blocking vampire at the end of the action. So that's not bad. And as above, but all minions get neg two bleed and neg two strength and cannot use weapons. How fantastic is that? So they come along. You block them. You cancel the combat, you untap yourself, and then at the advance, give them neg two strength and neg two uh, bleed. So even if they are coming across to bleed you, well, there you go. Telepathic misdirection, another four of this. Um, and if you're being bled out, 
Now it does cost you a blood, the Acta Minion is now attempting to bleed another Methuselah. How fantastic is that? Oh, you're not bleeding me, you are bleeding someone else. Enhanced sensors allowed me to intercept someone that was coming through with high stealth. And then there's this card, Wake with Evening's Freshness, which I seem to have about six of, even in different um, border. And that allowed me that if I was tapped out, I could act as if I was an untapped vampire. All right, so the reactions keep coming. Telepathic counter, if I was being bled, I would sometimes reduce it by one or two. And then we start to get into the combat cards, okay? Now being salubri, loved running around and uh, being in combat. Now, I needed cell lot out to really make great effectiveness of the deck. Um, pretty much this is increasing his striking damage. That was uh, Vengeance of Samuel. Skin of Rock helped protect him from damage um, by taking away damage. Um, this one, if I wanted to continue combat, I could continue it. And as above, but move up to three blood to this card. All right, so what does the blood? Play before range is determined, only usable if the opposing minion is a vampire, so not any other type of ally. A vampire can play only one Vitae block each combat. So it gains one optional press as um, the claws, which I had um, the Gangrel in for. But for um, the other abilities, gain one optional press this... Oh no, put this card in play and move up to two blood from the opposing vampire to this card. During your own tap phase, return the blood counters to that vampire and burn this card. So pretty much it really just helped take blood off the vampire for the combat, hoping to throw them into torpor. So when a vampire went uh, below zero, he goes into a state of torpor, which is sleep. In Torpa, they can be killed as well, which um, can be dangerous for vampires. Killing another vampire is against the laws or the Camarilla laws. Anyway, rolling with the punches prevented damage. So you're just rolling with those punches, as it says. And then we had Blissful Agony, another one with the sword, only usable at close range. Strikes are chosen. Opposing minion takes one unpreventable damage during the strike resolution. So if you're good enough to actually get a few cards out, such as um, like Vengeance or the V-Day block, and then you're hitting them for the extra damage, like all of a sudden these vampires are like no blood whatsoever. Here we go. Uh, range damage, if they manage to get into a range instead of staying up close. Got Blood Range, only usable in uh, close combat, and Blood Fury at close range as well. Had a Weather Control as the final combat card here. It's got to do with the Arcane symbol, which I said he also had. Both combatants of each of their retainers take one unpreventable damage before range is determined each round. A Vampire only play one Weather Control as above, but the amount of damage inflicted increases by one in each subsequent round. So that really helped with the press, as you saw before, um, and with all the other damage that's happening as well. Then we got onto the Master Cards. Now, I did talk about that card that filled your Vampire up again. Blood Dolls were to help me take blood off vampires and move blood around as were minion taps okay so i would bring out something big like him try and get as much blood off him fill him up with uh, one of the other actions and just keep doing it again that blood that i took off him i would use to bring other vampires out because it's about using your resources and whatever resources that you're running out of you need to replenish holderberg castle Tap to transfer equipment cards, move blood and transfer retainers between any two vampires you control. So there you go, that whole um, theory of moving blood around wherever I need it and where I can take it off. Guardian Angel, this vampire gets plus one intercept, had two of them. Very important that if I needed to stop something that was going to affect me, um, possibly later on in the game, you know, I could really just stop my predator or prey from really doing something if they were going to going to arm with something that would do like aggravated damage which means it doesn't matter how much blood I got I get sent to torpor if I take that damage so if I believe that my protection wasn't going to be enough the guardian angel and trying to stop them before they actually were able to build up was very important smiling jack the anarch just to cause some trouble sight beyond sight another salubri only card put this on a salubri controller salubri with this card gets plus one intercept so you can see um, a trend here yeah 
Um, tap to discard a card from hand. Um, you know, trying to get through your cards and not hold on to dead cards is important. Um, which also goes with the Elder Library, increasing your hand by plus one. Secure Haven. I put this card on a minion you control. This minion cannot be affected by D action. So while I'm out there trying to hit vampires and that, I maybe don't want Cell Lot affected by vampires coming across and hitting him once they've built up and I've not been able to stop it. The Path of Tears, we're down to three more cards. Another Salubri only card. Put this card on Salubri. When you move that Salubri from your uncontrolled region to your ready region during your influence phase, if you burn three or more, pull the scarce penalty for this vampire, you gain three pull. Okay, so yeah, the, with the Salubri, there is a, um, a scarce ability as well. So yeah, that's something that is within the game itself. So not important right now. Aaron Thebes, the Immortal, was a pretty hard card to find back then, so the fact that it was in this deck meant that this deck was pretty important to me, or it went really well. Put this card into play, you may tap Aaron Thebes to give a minion control by your Predator, neg one stealth for the current action. So not only did I have the ability to try and stop the people, I also had abilities to hamper them as well. And then, of course, a good old favourite. They are releasing a fifth edition for the role-playing game where they're releasing a whole bunch of starter decks um, to get people in the game. So I've got a fair few starter decks. I've got Learn to Play decks here as well. They're very much on the cheaper side, but it gets you straight into the game. And it is a fun game. A lot more fun when you've got five players. Um, more or less kind of affects it. But... Yeah, it's probably the best multiplayer card game, uh, collectible card game on the market. Now that's saying something, but I'm going to stand behind that. There is not a better multiplayer game out there. The things that it may suffer from, that with five people and trying to be involved in turns, is that you may have to wait a little bit. But this game has got politics, like this deck did, had no politics in it. So if you're not good at um, rushing and fighting or bleeding and stealth or getting equipment and all of that, there is the element of politics in there where you need to get everyone on side. Or if you can't, you get those vampires out that can have a vote and actually get your votes through, which really affect the game as well. So like, I love this game and I wouldn't be supporting it. I wouldn't be putting it on my shelves and taking that massive gamble if I didn't believe in it. So yeah, Vampire the Eternal Struggle. Take a look, if you're ever in store, um, ask me, we'll sit down, we'll play a game, I'll show you how it goes, and we'll try and get a few people together. I know there's a few people out there that have been talking to me about wanting to play, and let's get a regular thing happening. So yeah, really looking forward to that. Have a great one, guys. See ya.